Hello, Jeremy. Nice to meet you. Delighted. It's a good place to meet. It's a good place. Yes, yes, we have the Kremlin behind us. We only have time. There's no sun. But okay. Well, here, it's almost as romantic as the history of our Russia-France relations. These are two countries that know each other well, and you are well-placed to know this, since you are the great-grandson of Leo Tolstoy, who wrote War and Peace. Okay. So these relationships made up and down, you know, something about it. You know, the Russians are always unhappy that in War and Peace, the first ten pages are in French. They say, what the hell is that? What is wrong between France and Russia? Why is it no longer working? It is no longer working because the French thought they had the right to give lessons to the Russians. Uh, they, after the end of the Cold War, imagined that they had won the Cold War with the Americans. They have forgotten the history of Europe, the history of the continent. And I'm not only talking about the Napoleonic Wars, but also the last war, for example. Today, Macron says he's going to send the soldiers to Odessa. We must remind him that the last great war in Europe, France, held out for 40 days against the Nazis. And the Russians held out for four years and won the war in Berlin. I want to say very directly that the idea of sending French soldiers to Ukraine will end with the coffins in Norley covered by the tricolor. And it's not Macron who's going to go get them. So the French must understand the consequences. It is early. Tell us a little about us, because you know us very well. You speak perfect French. We studied in France. You have been... Yes, I did my studies, part of my studies in France. And I worked for the French press, too, here in Moscow in the 90s. So you know France. You loved it. What's wrong with it? Why don't you love us anymore? Why I must love you, you have to hear. And 19,000 sanctions against my country. You wage an economic war. You lie about Russia every day on BFM. You... So this is the reaction of a disappointed lover? No. But you are distributing narratives about the war in Ukraine which are completely, for us, unthinkable. The things and all the provocations which, during these two years, have already appeared in the press against Russia, and which give the image of Russians as people who eat children in the morning. So listen, we like France and the French, but we cannot accept that. What has gone wrong in our model? Vladimir Putin sets up the Russian model in opposition to the model of a West, which is decadent. What is decadent among us French people? Look at your government. Can we really think that it's not decadent to have such special people before you don't like it? To have such special people. Government, but the... Prime Minister Gabriel Attal and... I am referring to the fact that today France is governed in part by perverts. Quite simply, being homosexual is being special. See 20 for us. Yes, absolutely. No, and of course there are, but there are not in the protective government can homosexuals in Russia live freely. And of course protected, but they do not have the right to open propaganda of their lifestyles. Openly homosexual Prime Minister Gabriel Attal, for you, it is part of this decadence that you describe in the West. It is. Listen, no, it's the degradation of European leaders. Look today who we have to deal with, with Cholmay, with Macron, with Borrell, etc. So that's it. It's people who don't even have the idea. Uh, they cannot keep their word. What did you like about us that you no longer find? You who've been in France so often, what did you like in France that you no longer find today? Well, listen, I like the France, I like the culture, I like... I really regret that I couldn't bring my children to the Louvre, I don't know, show Paris, etc. Yes, because you rather want to send a nuclear bomb to Paris at the moment. That's rather the speech.
of course. On Russian television, they calculate the time it would take for a nuclear missile to arrive in Paris. Number. Two minutes, according to Soloviev. Not two minutes, a little more, but... Uh, so you have started to calculate the plans. Yes, of course, we calculate. Because, you know, for us, this is what is important historically for Russia. It is ensuring the security of the countries. And when the NATO countries, including also the France, puts the missiles around our borders and wants to put the missiles in Ukraine by joining Ukraine to NATO. So for us, this is unacceptable. Well, we saw, we heard the words of Emmanuel Macron translated into Russian here. Uh, you closely follow what the French president says more than what the German chancellor says, for example, what in Emmanuel Macron's words today raises the hackles of Russian power. who directly mentioned sending soldiers on the ground to Ukraine. And that's a statement that is very worrying for us because it brings us closer to the Third World War, downright. And it's you who are talking about this world first to us, French, of course, you French who wanted to come with the soldiers to Odessa, a Russian city. You French are in the process of provoking the Third World War. Because after that, I don't know, 300, 400 French killed. Your president, he will be in the trap. He should either speed up history or increase the presence of troops or withdraw the troops. You say that Odessa is Russian. The government, the Kremlin, also says that Donbass is Russian, and besides, most of Ukraine would be Russian. Uh, historically, of course, no one disputes the common culture between these lands and Russia. It's not the common culture. It's the same culture, because it's the same people. But I, as a journalist, have been going to Ukraine since the start of the war. I have met Ukrainians, and they all tell me their desire to stay away from Russia, to keep their independence, to remain Ukrainians, and not to become Russians. Do you hear this voice of the Ukrainians who tell you, leave us alone, we want to be independent. We have been waiting for these Ukrainians for 30 years. Oh. Stop doing. Uh... Against the 20 million Russians who lived in Ukraine, to ban them from their language, from banning them from education in Russian, from banning the common history that we have between Ukraine and Russia. Ukraine is my country. My great grandfather was the mayor of Kyiv. It is my country. Et je veux pas que mon pays devient un pays nazi comme aujourd'hui. Mais les choses changent. Je ne veux pas que mon pays parle une autre langue. And I don't want my country to be a NATO base for missiles against my country. And I don't want my country, Ukraine, to remain under the dictatorship of Western countries and NATO. Ukraine will never exist within the borders that it had before the war. Point will never exist. For us, it's an existential question. And we're not gonna stop. We're not gonna withdraw the troops. We're not gonna pretend that we are. We don't believe. We no longer believe in agreements with the Europeans. On ne croit plus. With the Americans, we will guarantee our security to the extent that it would be decided by Vladimir Putin, who is president of Russia, and therefore at that time, We stop, there will be another conference on security in Europe like that of Helsinki or Yalta. It's quite simple. The French president refuses him when we arrive at this situation and... Who cares about his opinion? You don't care what Emmanuel Macron says. Exactly. And when he tells you that he is ready, possibly not to set limits for himself. We don't care about his limits. We don't care about Macron for what he says, Macron. We don't care about Macron's limit. And we see killing France remains a completely nuclear power with 200 missiles. And so we, and we're going to kill everyone.
don't worry.